Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew here with my co-host Thousandfold. And today we're going to be having a few special guests. One of them is uh, a brother of mine, High and Lonesome, who most people know. Uh, He's been on the show before and he's a part of our crew and just one of our best friends. And uh, Boozy. Would you introduce our other guests, please? Our other esteemed guest. Sitting here with a bloke that needs a little introduction. It's our mate, Wally Duck. Um, another Aussie legend. He's uh, done a little show before, so thought we'd get him on and delve a bit deeper into his history in the scene. He's uh, one of my favorite blokes. Besides being a guy to go to about info, like a mentor, he's uh, a good mate as well. So happy to have Wally here today. Yeah, excellent. Um, you, so... Yeah, so pleased to have both of these guys on. Um, it's hard to get high and lonesome on, I'll say that. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to pat myself on the back. Well, no, yeah, it's dude. actually Booze. This whole thing was actually Booze's idea. I should give Booze the credit for that. <laughs> um, so I thought as a little icebreaker, maybe Wally could just talk a little bit about how he got started. And then same high and lonesome. Uh, just to point out that high and lonesome does have his own episode from like maybe a year ago. Um, yeah. But we'll get him to, you know, tell us a bit more again. Um, so yeah, Wally, tell us how you got started to begin with. I uh, like started smoking weed. You mean? Yeah, growing, smoking, bre- any any of it. Yeah, wherever you want. Oh, it was a brother-in-law actually, and um, I was pretty young. He was a real stoner, and um, I was just sitting with him in the lounge. He's he's passed a joint to me, uh, some uh, tie stick in a joint. Uh, I think he he loved getting people high, and. Um, it took me a lot though, like uh, two joints, and he's like sick of you know giving his weed away at that point. So, um, and I still wasn't high. I, I had to kind of like get up and and I, I went into another room. And when I stepped down into the next room, it just hit me all at once and um, like uh, complete euphoria, you know. And uh, yeah, I never I never looked back after that. <laughs> it was fantastic, I thought. And, uh, yeah, he was part of me get growing too because um, his friend had a property and um, and we couldn't get tie sticks anymore, so we thought we'd, we'd grow our own stuff. So, And uh, I was about 14 or 15 at that point. And um, we grew a fair bit of weed, actually. I think I was the only one of my crew. We were just young and we had, like, pounds of weed and... Um, Everyone else is still scratching around for a, a few grams, you know. So, what part of Oz were you living in at the time, brother? Ah, uh, Melbourne. Yeah, I'm. I'm oh, from yeah. Melbourne. So yeah. How are you getting ties to finish down there? Like, were you starting them indoors or depping them? Or? No, there was no, there was no indoors back then. We just uh, waited forever and ever, and uh, it was all just bag seed we grew. And what um, year was this, Wally? Like roughly. What period oh, was this? 82, 83, something like that. Oh, actually, it would be 83. It was after, like, uh, we had uh, Ash Wednesday. Do you remember that? Or maybe you're a bit young. Bushfires. A bit young, but yeah. I heard of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's before my time as well. So it was just after that, and, and all the scrub had been burnt. So um, there was lots of open ground at my friend's place. So we all stuck some weed up in the mountain there. And um, oh, some of it took forever to finish. And um, hermaphrodites and all sorts of crazy stuff. Big couple of big purple plants too. And um, yeah, it wasn't until we was into winter where most of these things were finishing. That's crazy. What was like the import scene like at that time? Like I've only got a little bit of experience. So obviously, I started smoking what twenty or uh, oh, no, nah, twenty eleven something like that. So by that time, it was just bush and hydro. But you're saying you had like Thai and I know my mate's dad used to get Indonesian and stuff like that. What other stuff was around at the time that was coming in as input? We mostly got Thai 
Uh, and we got hash too, though, a fair bit of hash, all, all different sorts of hash. Um, I don't know who, who imported it. I, I'm sure, like, there was large imports in containers and that, but I, I think a lot of the smaller stuff was just uh, uh, customs weren't as strict back then and people being able to bring it with them as, as far as I could work out. just like um, we had Lebanese gold and um, the, the, the larger import was, I think it was Mujahideen hash. It's all this, uh, you know, gold stamp, black hash, um, you know, squishy sort of stuff, spongy, uh, wrapped yeah. in red cellophane, and um, but but we we mostly only got Thai where I was in Melbourne there, but we we got the uh, the stuff on sticks for quite a while, uh, and then um, we got loose stuff in bags, uh, uh, golden golden buds, golden Thai, golden Buddha they called it. Which um, I, th I think that was the best stuff. That was, I, I remember that the best. Did you ever get into that tie stick book that I flicked you? The smugglers over in the uh, yeah, yeah, and, I, yeah, and I, I've also got those guys. They, they have a little group on um, on Facebook as well too. One of them runs it. So uh, yeah, no, I've, I've seen a fair bit of that. Yeah, he was he was posting. He was based in that one of the areas where I, I like to go in Udon Thani. That seems to be one of the places that was pretty famous for, for the Thai sticks. Amazing. Um, hi, Nansom. You want to tell us a bit about how you got started in your journey? Uh, yeah, so I started pretty young, as I have noted before, um, basically soon after I started smoking um i come from a farming family and it was like man we can we can grow this so um we were getting a lot of brick weed a lot of mexican weed occasionally get it from somewhere a little more exotic colombia or something but uh for the most part it was mexican weed uh very low quality um you know green sometimes but a lot of it brown and just not you know it did the trick but it wasn't you know, pleasurable to smoke. So, um, started, you know, trying to kind of cross over some of my vegetable growing techniques to weed and, um, it worked out, you know, I, uh, I got started growing bag seeds and, um, they, they finished pretty well, um, in Virginia where I am. Uh, you can usually get them done right around the first frost, but they're, Airier plants, you know, you don't you don't have the density you have with a lot of these modern modern lines. So you can you can get them done without getting too much mold or anything like that. Um, but yeah, started from there. Then I moved on to growing Dutch stuff and um, outdoor. That's a whole different ball game. Um, here, you know, there's skunk one types northern lights types you have issues with mold just because of density um so it took me a few years to realize that i was better off growing kind of thin leaf varieties more open open plants looser bud structure that kind of thing um but yeah i fucked up plenty while i learned <laughs> the way is there so we've got we've got you growing in Virginia and obviously while they're growing in Australia. Are there is there any overlap in like the climate at all in, in where you guys are? I don't think so, right? But you both I don't NLT believe so. NLTs. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think there is. Um, you know, Wally was a huge inspiration to me on Overgrow and IC Mag. I used to look at, you know, his his gorilla pictures, you know, his fields out in the bush, and it was just like, man, like I wanna do that. But um yeah, completely different environment to try to do it in. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They grow tobacco in Virginia, uh, H&L? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, tobacco, corn, soybeans, all that stuff. Um, it's a lot of the, you know, mass production farming now. Um, but it's a good climate for tomatoes and, you know, some of the traditional traditional crops. The problem here is the humidity. Um, we have such high humidity, especially um, later in the summer and the, the fall. So it's, um, 
it's kind of tricky. You know, you gotta, you gotta work at it to, to make it happen here. Yeah. Just when you don't want it around harvest time. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I ask, uh, I can ask you both, I guess, what were some of the first plants or lines that you grew that you noticed actually did exceptionally well in, in the area? In my specific area, you mean? Yeah. Um, Scotibas do really well, but we had the same problem as H&L where at the end of the season here, because we're close to the coast, we get that, that rain and the humidity. and So I, I opted for growing in our dry season because the, the hours are still, um, you know, the days aren't very long still. And um, just anything that would finish at that time of year, and that's how I ended up with growing C99, actually, because uh, that thing uh, did really well here in that time of year. It uh, produced, you know, a fair, fair amount of weed. The weed was really good quality, and uh, it didn't re -veg, you know, with the hours increasing like they were. So um, that was my... So I'm, that's why I made lots of crosses with C99. I was actually... I was not intent on, on making seed for sale. It was actually seeds to grow. And then excess would end up, you know, I'd send to Gypsy or something like that. So, mate, how did you select your C99, mate? Like, were you breeding it for the conditions up there? Because, like, obviously, C99 had a pretty bloody good run, but I've spoken to a lot of people and, like, people that are, you know, big into haze and stuff like that. And a lot of them rate your C99, uh, C99 stock as some of the best. And I wonder if that's because you were breeding it for like a particular effect or if it was strictly because you were in that climate, you were likely selecting more towards the hazy types or what was the breeding like on that one? Yeah, maybe a bit of both, but the pineapple, eh? Uh, the pineapple was what I was chasing because um, the rest of it, it was okay. But um, when I found a pineapple, it was really, you know, it's all, all nice smelling, good looking bud, but the pineapple was just streaks ahead of the other stuff, in my opinion. And um, so that's what I was chasing. Pineapple weed. <laughs> yeah, the, the pineapple, the C99 pineapple was uh, always one of my favorite expressions. It was above and beyond, especially flavor wise, to be able to, and, and oh, to smell that in weed was, was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Hash, yeah. pineapple hash. Yeah, right? Wow. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll have a few, buddy. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, here, you know. Like I said, I started with Mexican bag seed. Um, that did pretty well here. Um, we, I never had major mold issues, you know, a spot here or there. Um, then as I kind of started looking at more magazines, looking online, I decided to order some seeds and give it a go. So I started with some cheaper stuff, some Nirvana stuff, Casey Brain stuff. Um, I tried quite a few things and realized pretty quickly that it was not suited to my environment. There were a few that were, uh, Durban poison did well. Um, Northern lights haze, uh, from Nirvana did well, but I, it wasn't like a NL five haze, like, like an a five or a C five. It was, it had some skunk one or something in it. It was much quicker. Yeah. Um, then what really, started killing it for me outside was super silver haze um that's that's the one that really got me you know feeling like i could i could do something nice outdoor here so um you know it, it was definitely pheno specific you know some of the longer ones you couldn't finish some of the like eight or nine weekers you know you could you could get them done but towards the end you'd start to see some issues um some issues with rot just because of the density of those but um we had a cut that we kept around that was a really good outdoor uh really good outdoor cut and um you know i i'm pretty hard-headed i still try all kinds of stuff outdoor i still try bubba outdoor every few years and um you know it just you, you can't consistently get it done well here you can sometimes but um you know that's why i favor stuff like Super Silver Haze outside, um, the Appalachian line I did, uh, and some of those hybrids do well outside. There are a few cuts that do really well outside. Um, Shoreline probably being one of the best 
uh, for here. You know, it gets done in time. It doesn't have any issues. Um, you know, it's normally October 10th, October 15th, somewhere in there it's done. Um, so it misses that kind of cool down and the heavier rain season. Um, but man, I'm, I'm just always trying new stuff, always, always seeing what works, but I do love doing haze hybrids outside. Couldn't pull off a pure haze here, but haze hybrids are kind of where it's at for me. Yeah. With, I heard one question about the Appalachia real quick. Uh, you may have even touched on it the first time we spoke to you. Um, not the first time, sorry, in your episode last time. Um, when I think of like a Chem D type, I don't think of, I don't think of a region like, the, or, you know, a climate like the one you were describing. Um, did it take much work to, to get the Appy to kind of, you know, um, I don't know, be okay yeah. in that environment? Like between, between like, you know, the Trez Dog and the Green Crackers, I'm like, those don't so, sound like the, yeah, tell me about that. Okay, so of the Chem cuts that I've grown outdoor here, Chem D does the best for me. Um, you know, Chem 4 is bad. Chem 91 is just a no-go. Um, they just melt away. Um, Chem D does pretty well, especially if you can, um, you know, keep it dry towards the end. Um, we've done hilarious things over the years to keep, you know, the October rains off plants. Um, but uh, Green Crack was great because it was always done so early. It triggers really early here. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it'll trigger in July in Virginia. Um, so you can get that plant, you know, harvested before October. So, um, you know, I wanted to cross the two to try to get something like green crack with a little more potency that kind of did double duty indoor and outdoor here. Um, it's, Appalachia is definitely quicker than Kim D. Um, so it helps there. Um, it's just, just a matter of trying to get it done before October, you know, the first or second week of October. Yeah, that's really cool. I might even try one of your hybrids over our summer here later on, um, just to see how it, how it does. Is it pretty dry there? Um, it's probably like 60, 70. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I yeah, Not, you could, it, it could handle that. Yeah. You talking indoors thousand or outdoors? Yeah, it's still indoors, but indoors. I still have to okay. worry about it because, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you were talking about outdoor. No, you're, you're fine. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty solid. It's easy. It's an easy plant to please. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, Booz, you had you you listed a few different lines or cuts that we want to ask uh, Wally about. Yeah, mate, I had a few things down. So obviously the first one, um, probably the one that you're most known for besides the C99 was the golden pineapple. I remember seeing that in the Canna Bible 3. Uh, what was the breeding like on that? And what was the plant like in general? I, I don't know how that even got in there. I <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> someone, you know, years down the track said, oh, check this out. And I had no idea. But um, that was just, I just had some, um, a gypsy used to send me seeds all the time. And uh, there was the, a bunch of um, squish, whatever line said, that guy, uh, what was his name? The the weasel uh, guy? Flying <laughs> flying Dutchman? No, 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 no. Mongoose. Mongoose, that's right. Yeah, uh, the, he 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 made the whole release those. Plural? Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, weasel, the weasel guy. Yeah. 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 He's scary. He's a scary dude. <laughs> I know. I tried to keep away from that guy. I'm glad I did. But, yeah, me um, too. <laughs> but um, no, I just put some in, and seriously, that was just like uh, it was a plant that was there at the time, and so it copped some pollen, and um, it was nothing intentional with it. But um, apparently it came out quite good. So, uh, and I, I grew a bunch of it too, but, and I, I just shared some with a bunch of guys and that's how that must have happened. I think there was a cut. Someone kept around for quite a while from that as well too. So, 
I think there <coughs> still is, eh? Yeah, no, I saw something pop up on the Kanaka banner recently. I saw someone had some golden pineapple cut that they were raving about. Um, yeah, so I was like, that's oh, sweet. We'll see if we can. Just the time, seeds. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bloody oath, mate. But um, yeah, I said, I'll oh, see if we can get some seeds, kick them over. That'd be great. Get back is it? There. I think a uh, uh, fucking um, Professor P messes with uh, a golden pineapple. I don't know if it's the same exact one, but yeah, over the yeah. years, too. Yeah, I'd wonder. I've, I've got some pineapple field stuff. A mate um, kicked me. In. Uh, I was wondering if it had C99 in it because it's super yes. pineapple, eh? Yeah, yeah it's got it. Yeah. There was a, another one. There was, there was a pineapple skunk green. at some point, too. I don't know whose it was. I can't remember, but there was. Pineapple some, skunk? Yeah. Some greenhouse or something. Someone had some pineapple skunk. Some seed pack somewhere. Yeah. Someone um, had another some one of on mine like, was um, the go, double sour Zamel. Zamel. Yeah. Oh, the double sour Zamel. I remember I heard you speak about that as well. It sounded like a bloody interesting outdoor hybrid. Yeah. I I, I love that East Coast sour diesel. That, that stuff was awesome, eh? And um, yeah, yeah. I, I've grown some of H&Ls. I've got some in now of the Appalachia that you were talking about, East, East Coast sour diesel cross. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be pretty good stuff. But um, the, the, the Zamel, I got that from, um, what was his name? Purple, purple flowers, purple rain. I don't know, something like that. One of the guys on uh, Overgrow, on IC Mag, sorry. And he just sent me all this Sativa stuff uh, just out of the blue. Do you want this stuff? I said, fuck yeah, I'll have that. <laughs> and um, amongst it was a Zamel. And um, it was uh, Gypsy Zamel originally, but I think it was a couple of generations along. And um, man, that stuff was a beast. It. Um, had this like uh, I I I'd known about it for a while, but everyone said it had a carrot smell, and I fucking never liked yeah. that carrot smelling weed, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but this yeah. stuff, it did it did smell carroty initially, but um, then it ended up with this like tea tree oil sort of uh, pretty strong aroma, and it was really strong weed. I was really surprised, but it was like a um, that creeper weed. It, it wouldn't grow upwards. It'd get like a couple of feet high, and then it just splay down you know fall over and uh, i had this massive bush of the stuff i think i kept that cutting for quite a while and that's what i used for the initial um sour zamel and then i i just crossed it to sour diesel again and yeah i've, I've grown a bit and some other guys i i know have done that do you know bin chicken you know bin chicken yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's been on the show yep we had him on the show yeah there you go so he's used it in one of his that uh del What's that thing he's got with the... Oh, Dulaga. Dulaga. Isn't it in there? I think I, it is. I think so. Or oh, one of his things that he's working with, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah, fairly well. ABC, Sal Zamel. Yeah. Yeah, we chat a bit. So, and we do a bit of swapping backward and forward. So, um, yeah, he, he really liked it. He liked a, a fair bit of the stuff I sent him, he said. So... Did you all get the East Coast Sour Diesel clone down there? Yeah, we got it off... Um, uh, I can try and remember his name. Santero? That's him. Yeah. He sent a couple of things down. Uh, East Coast Sour Diesel, uh, C5. That's where we got the C5 from. And oh, wow. uh, Star Dog, too. So, um, wow. yeah. Wow. I'm impressed that they made it. Me, too. I don't, they, I don't know how they got here, but and they're I'm not only really going to be gone. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to keep that one as long as I could, and uh, it was actually the sour. I kept the sour diesel, and it wasn't until recently that that ended because uh, I, I had it with a friend, and he shared it with another friend of mine because he couldn't. It wasn't suitable for him, thinking my other friend would keep it, but he never did. So uh, that's how that goes, huh? Yeah, it is. Sharing's good though. That way, you know, you might run out of it, and old mate's got it over there, but. It doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just yeah, ran. The sour Zamel just... always. Oh, sorry, thousand. Go, brother. No, no, you go, you go. Oh, I was just gonna say quickly. The sour Zamel have always interested me because I've got this thing for like sours and OGs paired with these sativas because it's like you know this modern, uber uh, potent plant that like isn't a cambio. Yeah. It's got a little bit of sativa in it. These cushions and these sours. So paired with um paired with a, a crazy sativa, I'm interested to see what they do outdoor. So I've got a lot of hope for the um, LA Kush and the Sour Diesel by the Mango Haze that H&L did. Um, I've yeah. got like 40 of each of them. I'm going to do a big pop and 
try and find something interesting for outdoor because people always said that diesels do well outdoors so be able to yeah find yeah. something pretty yeah nice. it's i have i have a really big one outside right now <laughs> oh, uh, it, it, it always always does well here for me um you you can get a few issues but i've been the last few years i've been doing them in, in a greenhouse and um i'm depping some now they do really well here that way yeah that's it's awesome. a it, it's a killer killer cut and it pairs well it, i love the way it pairs up with the i'm finishing up a couple of plants now my mate sunny southern sun seeds is another aussie breeder um he got the he had the sour clone as well so i'm growing east coast mullen thai so it's sour kush oh, mullen wow. thai across to a kemi kush mullen thai that he did so they're not a fucking speck of mold on them and they got you know yeah vb stubby colas so going pretty fantastic nice. and stoked on it hell yeah this is kind of a nothing observation but i just wanted to point out um it seems like wally's got pineapple and h now has a lot of mango that's all i wanted to say I do like mango. A couple of, fruits, a couple of pretty, pretty guys. boys in here. Yeah. <laughs> pretty boys. So, yeah, because I think I was you know, to... You go. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chanel. I was just going to say, you know, like, I think a lot more stuff is mango than, like, some of our friends. Like, you know, our buddy Local has said some of these things are a little more, like, cut white grapes, which, you know, is pretty specific and... <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, after he said that, I noticed it in some of the, you know, like the EB Appalachia stuff. Um, you know, it, it can be a little white grapey, but mango, I still get a lot of mango from Appalachia, green crack. Um, the mango haze was surprisingly mango on some of the phenos. Uh, yeah, yeah very, but yeah, I'm a sucker for mango. <laughs> I wonder if mango resists mold for you there too, eh? Do you think so? It could. Um, maybe. I, I don't know. You know, that's something I've always kind of wanted to dive a little more deep into, but I haven't because, you know, I've always heard that terpenylene resists mold, um, which makes sense to me, you know, like in some of the sativas, but then like train wreck here, if you don't take it early, mold's pretty hard uh and that's like that's a pretty terpenylene dominant plant so i don't know if it's that or uh, it's something i've always wanted to kind of dig into but i haven't i've been growing mids this whole time instead uh, <laughs> i wonder if size of the bract has something well I've, i reckon it probably would but i think size of the bract has heaps to do with it because looking at that shoreline like it's pretty dense but those bracts look quite small like in comparison to like green crack or train wreck or something like that and same as with uh, these, yeah. um, Mullum Thai is like relatively small bracts, but very dense flowers. So I wonder today if it's just, I don't know, the, the bract itself that will um, rot and then start to rot the flower out with the waters. No idea. Um, I don't know. I, it's hard It's hard to say because sour can have pretty large bracts and that does better than, you know, than if you tried to take green crack to the end of October. That just wouldn't work here. You know, you can get it the beginning of October, um, you know, but it's, you're not going to get it at Halloween. It's going to be just melted away. Um, here, you know, the, the thing that I've noticed with a lot of people talking to a lot of people over the last few years is, I mean, you just have to have that plant rock solid going into flower. You got to stay on it. Um, you know, we get, we get something, uh, Saporia leaf spot. Uh, here and it's I see it in pictures of plants all the time and if you get something like that in a plant something fungal like that it just weakens the plant so much that it's it's susceptible to everything else um, so I, I try to you know keep my plants well fed plenty of calcium and I, I spray a lot um, I don't spray flower but here it's just like trying to keep the plant as healthy as you can going in and you'll see way less issues cow mag yeah. baby <laughs> <laughs> so um, was this um mong tai that's a as well what's that sorry the mong tai, mong tai. 
from Prof. Oh, yeah, 37. Oh, is that from Prof? Oh, yeah. I see that there. Yeah. 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 What about it? Can you talk some about it? The, the who it came from, the smell, flavor, effect, growth, all of it. It did. It did come from Prof. Seventy. So it came via. I think Prof. Sent it to Bushy, and then Bushy sent it to me. Something like that. And um, Bushy knew more about the the Mong part of it. I don't know, but as far as I remember, um, Prof.'s wife, who, who I, I did meet them all, and and Prof.'s wife, biggest smoker ever, real real bong head. That lady, <laughs> just like sit in the bathroom all day smoking bong. Seriously, she she loved it. And she, she couldn't go anywhere without a bong. We we went away uh, for a couple of days, <laughs> and uh, she had to like make up a, a like an orchy bottle bong. You know, um, how do you know about those? yeah, brother. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so um, so we, we I, and her dad was a, a, a smoker, and I I think the mong tie came from bag seed from him. Uh, we initially thought he was a grower, but I, I don't think he was. So I, I think he was just a toker. And yeah. uh, and they knew they knew Hmong people. I met some Hmong people with them. So because uh, I made the Hill Tribe people, you know, yeah. and um, and I think that's that's where that stuff came from. And uh, you know, I grew some out in the jungle there. And um, you know, everyone says that uh, Thai can really handle rain. The fucking doesn't like wet roots much, eh? You know, wet, it, it died. Several of them oh, died. Wow. Yeah, seriously. I, it was in an area where, like, it was still on a bit of a slope, but it was at the bottom of a slope. And so it got wet feet for just too long, and several of them died. But um, the higher ones, they went all right. And um, no, no, it was it was nice weed. Someone uh, that I gave some to uh, rated it as the best that they'd gotten off me. And uh, they'd gotten a fair bit of, what I thought was good weed, but they they seriously like that stuff. So it's obviously had a fair bit of potential. But um, it's interesting that it came from Bushy or through Bushy. I was going to ask you about that because I'd seen that Kangal was growing it in that. Um, I don't know if you've seen that Marijuana Australiana documentary, but I did. I, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. And that huge, yeah. that huge, was it the huge plant? Yeah. 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 And he said, Oh, no, I think that was the Ohakan mango haze. We said you put a Mong Tai in late. And so it was getting like, it would have gone 20 meters or something, but it only got to seven or 11 or something this year. So yeah, okay. <laughs> would have been a big one. But I wondered, eh, because if Bushy had it, if it was one of the ones that they were using when they were doing the outback and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah, I got yeah. it through Bushy. And then I, I think I might have even sent some back to him because he ran out or so. I can't remember. Uh, there was always a bit of, uh, you know, to and fro. Did you ever grow Hempy's tie or see it or nah? Well, no, no one, no one can have that. It's... You mean the the, the, thea? <laughs> the, thea? the thea? Yeah, yeah. He's not a sharing man. That man. He's not nice. <laughs> not very literate. <laughs> 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 no, I've had some problems with that fellow. Yeah. Who and, has uh, it? I'd be like the last guy on earth he'd ever share anything with. I reckon. Yeah, I'd be second to last. I would guarantee. <laughs> 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 Um, just a random, random question here, which is, uh, have you spent much time in, in that part of Southeast Asia, Wally, yourself, just like to visit? Oh, yeah, or... absolutely. Yeah, I've been there heaps, probably a dozen times at least to um, Thailand and, and round around too, like all, you know, northeast, west, south, and um, mostly in the northeast where, where they used to grow the Thai sticks. That's, and I, I married a woman from there. From the northeast it's called isan the area in the northeast there mm -hmm. and um each each section of thailand's a little bit different you know the the cultures and and, and the food and and even the languages uh vary a, a bit and um in the isan area there uh they eat some crazy stuff like um frogs and um bugs and uh frogs are Frogs are pretty good, I have to say. Having tried frog before, I, it, it it reminds me of poultry. What? The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Bone yeah. Is no, for real. It's like chicken, like small chicken. Yeah, frog it's frog legs are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I just get funny, so fucking though. weird out here, not eating frogs. Well, <laughs> cool. Not a lot of meat on those. You're missing out, dude. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. yeah. Yeah, super spicy um, food, though. I, w I think we have a whole, I think Booze has a whole bunch of questions about Thailand, which we'll save for later on. Uh, H&L, have you spent much time in Southeast Asia? 
like just even as a you know tourist or no i don't i don't get out much um i have a lot of <laughs> obligations that keep me around here fair enough so unfortunately yeah. i have and i think before before i make it over there i'll probably try to get to australia hang out with these guys i got so many oh, jokes yeah. i could be rolling out right oh, now yeah. about you traveling to <laughs> thailand <laughs> one night in bangkok yeah 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 maybe one day <laughs> yeah we'll, go, we'll we'll take a special trip there together <laughs> oh man Getting i mean shit. going back to what wally was saying though the food is amazing and like so cheap as well for us um yeah fucking amazing food yeah i found um, a lot of cuisines I do Have love Thai food. Um, booze? What's that, brother? Have you traveled to Southeast Asia? Nah, I've been to Bali, bro, like every other Australian. Um, that's, <laughs> that's like the Northeast Island of Australia, but that's about it, man. Fiji. Most of my travel is um, Europe. So Amsterdam, a bunch, um, and then like Germany and Switzerland and stuff. But no, I'd, I'd love to get over there. Uh, Nepal would probably be where I'd head first. I was actually talking to a mate. Um, looking at the Zomia trips, they've got some trips up on their website, yeah. like a TBD at the moment, but they're looking at going to like South America, um, Morocco, and then places like Cambodia. And um, I've got an aunt that's Cambodian and uh, an uncle that lived there for oh, 10 years or so. So I'd probably look to head over there. It'd be fantastic. And I think there's still some fantastic Cambodian land races. There's even this guy that's like popped up over there. I think he's an expat that's um, selling seeds. So yeah, it could be a cool little venture. All right, before we go any further, Wally, let's talk Duck's Foot. Like, it's the first I, I knew about you when I hit you up way back in the day. Wally yep. and his Duck's Foot. It's, it's, I mean, Wally Duck. <laughs> There's a lot of misconceptions even nowadays. Like, if you go online and you hear people talk about Duck's Foot, they'll refer to it as, like, in, instead of a, a strain or something that you work, they'll refer to it as, like, a, a trait that goes through cookies or, you know, through OG Kush. Um, can you talk a little bit about it, where you found it? um what you found working with it etc but give us a little lowdown on it yeah we, we we got it locally here and to be honest i don't know the origin but it's just a a, a trait that can be in cannabis so the origin doesn't have to be specific you know it doesn't have mm -hmm. to have been from hawaii or africa or sure. whatever you know? um and, and and a guy that i knew um that i grew some weed with he um he he talked to me a little bit about it, but he just said he he knew a guy that had some stuff that had like uh, three fingers uh, mm -hmm. leaf on it, you know. Which I I said, look, I've seen that; it's no big deal. But he said, oh, this is good weed, and um, but he said the guy wouldn't give him any, and then so um, so we had to wait till the guy was desperate, <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. And then he said so he's given us a, like a box of uh plants or something and uh old mates made some seed out of it and he and i uh grew some and um we actually only had one um one duck's foot plant i think we had yeah and then we crossed it oh man that shit stunk yeah Smell. yeah it did it was skunky yeah yeah really that's the only thing i could liken it to like wasn't the same smell as skunk but just how it permeated you know yeah the, uh, the, the distance you could smell it from and yeah. um and so yeah it was a nice weed a little bit of hashy sort of uh and and the tasted you get on your lips and you could lick your lips and taste it afterwards and um smile too happy 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 weed so yeah. uh so we kept around but i kind of didn't know what i was doing back then making seeds and um it was a bit of a hit and a miss thing mm -hmm. and I didn't do that well on the first recreation of it. And then I, ha I couldn't go back because I lost seed and the guy that, uh, that I got to hold on to the stash, he gave him away to his uh, ex-girlfriend's new guy, which I thought, fuck, who even gives yeah, ex-girlfriend's guy anything, you know? Kind of cookie. Yeah. <laughs> but, but honestly, the, um, the best out of the seed we had, there was um, – I don't know, maybe it was 50% uh, web leaf stuff and 50% just the normal uh, cannabis leaf. And the normal stuff was the, the better stuff. And yeah. uh, I would have used that to, you know, bring back the taste and the smell. But, yeah, I, I didn't have it. So, 
Um, so, and then like, I lost most of my stuff. But um, I got some um, stuff off a Hawaiian dude. Uh, we, we spoke together and it seemed like his stuff, uh, the stuff, what I had, had all the advantages that he wanted and, and vice versa. Yeah. And so we swapped. And that was that Hawaiian webbed indica. Yes. Yeah. And um, it grew short, like about three or four foot. Had one main cola, didn't want to branch out. Huge stem, huge big hollow stem on it. So in my idea, I thought it was definitely indica. Whereas yeah. my stuff was tall, branchy, you know, flowered longer. And so I, I, this wasn't a pure sativa, that duck's foot, but it was definitely sativa dominant, you know. Yeah versus that indica. So I made a cross of the two. Wow, that stuff. Uh, the strongest uh, smelling weed I've ever come across. It just stunk. And, um, but like petroleum, you know, like yeah. that's why I thought when, I, when, I'm, when I was growing it and, and the, the people started talking about diesel and I'm smelling this stuff and thinking, wow, it must be like this stuff. But yeah. this, was even, this is even stronger than that, that diesel smell. It, yeah. it didn't make you nauseous uh, pruning it. I'd prune like an ounce or two, and I'd have to stop and, and, and go away from the smell. It was just that bad. Yeah. Bad, bad in a good way, you know. Yeah, matches. <laughs> but um, I actually got some back from a dude recently, uh, and I, I've just I've just planted some. This guy on on Instagram, and uh, he he showed me a, showed me a photo, and he said his old man got this stuff in blah blah year and he lives in you know blah blah and i said oh, that's just down the road from me mm -hmm. and i was on that web web hybrid at the time and um and i asked him does it, does it stink like this and he said oh yeah it's it stinks so yeah maybe it's the same one i don't know Hope so. i remember seeing a bloke growing duck's foot widow well not even that long ago um north yeah. side of brisbane and fucking 2018 2019 i remember he had a duck's foot widow in his garden and it was doing the the leaf thing so this is yeah. before I was even really getting into the seed stuff. I was only just started growing five years back yeah. or something. But um, well, at that time, really, um, yeah. So yeah, I wonder hey, if it's still around in any form, even locally, or if even this is, might be the same bloke. Yeah, I don't know. This guy, he sells seeds. This guy, uh, the seed packets I got from him, they they look like a saleable item. So I'm pretty sure he sells seeds. So I think. I he said he was, I Okay. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, when I when I got interested in the duck's foot, what I wanted to do at the time, which is like silly looking back, but um, I wanted to make an auto flower that was like kind of, um, you know, under the radar. But that was the problem was that it stunk so fucking bad that if you grew it outdoors, <laughs> even if you could a little bit with the webbed leaf trait, there was no yeah. mistaking the smell when the sun hit in the morning. Like they're just not not happening. Anybody's going to be looking for it. So it wasn't really stealthy per se. But yeah, that was the no, initial plan. Not in that regard. Didn't and plus the Dutch. What's that? Didn't one of the Dutch companies do a auto duck not too long ago? I remember there was like a Frisian duck that that uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they did an auto version of it. I always wondered did if that was from Wild Play Stock. I think yeah, it was Frisian that duck. Dutch fashion maybe. Yeah, Dutch fashion. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think they were. You the think that was your shop? Okay. Yeah, and there's, there's another guy that released some too. Um, I can't remember his name, but there's been a few of them around. Yeah, there were a bunch of uh, filial generations released on IC Mag and the cert, like Seed Server Fund and all kinds of stuff over the years. I don't know if those were always coming directly from you or if someone was uh, F twoing them or F threeing them. I oh, know it was them F twoing or F threeing or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I never. I shared some. I I actually saw some on um and and I got a reminder the other day on Facebook and this guy in Africa said he's got these these plants and he's got them from a field in Africa and uh, and then they were definitely ducks for it and it was like the original stuff that I used to have Very and weirdly enough I um I I one of the first trades I did was to to Africa uh, this this last oh, wow. that I over there and so and she gave it to some guys that were growing larger amounts so uh it is actually possible that that did come from stuff that i'd sent there so you know you never well, know how that works yeah it goes long and far doesn't it yeah it does man 
does. Mm. Did you ever hear nice. of the Molokai Frost, Wally? Yes. Yeah, I wonder eh, if that might have been in the duck's foot because my mate, um, local bird seed, grew a bunch of that from Good Gear seeds, and that stuff fucking stunk. As you're saying, you had some taller seeds in the first, um, or the F1s or the F2s or whatever. I wonder if maybe it's hybridized with it or something because that was super stinky weed. Yeah, maybe because the guy that I, I swapped with, he also had that stuff, but I think they all lost a lot of stuff around that same time. I kind of like, it seems to always happen with us in this trade that everyone loses all their stuff. And then we've was all it got the fly in Hawaiian? Um, was it that you were trading with? Oh. The fly in Hawaiian? No. Nah. No, it wasn't. It was, um, I'll, I'll get it. CK2. Okay. Yeah. And um, just trying to think. Uh, Puna. Puna was where he lived or, or where he got the stuff. One, one of the two in yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, booze. Any more, any other questions you want to ask either, either of these guys before we move on to maybe some of their more recent work? No, um, man. You can go on to the mango haze, I reckon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's start. Maybe we start with a, a high and lonesome. We already mentioned the mango haze, but do you want to tell us a bit more about how you got to working with it recently and what that work has been like? Uh, yeah, I I got some from booze. Um, I, I actually wanted older stock, um, just because some of the more recent things I've gotten, um, you know, the Northern lights, haze and super silver haze that I've gotten recently, um, from Europe, uh, they weren't representative of what I remembered. Um, yeah. I, I mentioned wanting some and, and booze had Wally stock and I was like, man, I'd love to grow his cause I know, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing and it's, it's likely older stock. Um, so I got those, um, I don't know, a year and a half ago or something, popped all of them, went through them, found, found the ones I liked, found unique ones. Um, I found a male I really liked and, um, you know, made a bunch of Can you seeds with it, increased it. Can you tell us a bit about uh, what kind of spread of, you know, expressions you saw in that in that pot? Yeah. Um, so those plants, it was interesting to me. At the same time, I popped uh, Wally's Neville's Haze Mango Haze. And comparatively, uh, the Mango Haze was a much thinner leaf plant, um, more open, you know, what you would think of uh, with a haze plant. Um, you know, they looked, they looked more similar to the A5 cut I was growing um, than the Neville's Mango Haze did. Uh, there were, there were a lot of, you know, they have this weird, like, as they put on um, new sets of leaves, they kind of roll out. Um, it's a really um, characteristic trait I noticed in them. Um, but, you know, once you flower them, you have, you have these very strong almost like green crack smelling mango plants um you have some that are like a dirty metallic mango and then there were some that were kind of like savory i had one that i swear smelled like um like salisbury steak you know that is you know, mm. that there. <laughs> it was like super no what, savory what like it's like a it's, it's like, like a pan right like steak and yeah pan. yeah it's yeah, like, yeah. A, it's like a, <laughs> It's like a ground beef patty need to be like, it's like poor man, like probably depression era steak. Um, but you know, like when I was a kid, we had it and it was something we got at school and like I had this plant and uh, in the mango haze, it was one of the later flowering ones actually. And um, I just love the structure of it. It was, you know, it didn't throw big buds. It threw a lot of small kind of hazy looking buds through it and the whole time i was flowered i was like what the fuck is that smell you know it's just so obscure and then one day it hit me you know i think i was like harvesting it and i was like it smells like fucking salisbury steak it's that's incredible um but you know for the most part it was there was a lot of you know fruitier haze stuff it was more mango than i kind of expected it to be um 
but they're great plants. Um, I've been smoking on a bunch of the dry sift I made from it. Um, we got a big jar I kind of tap into every day. Did you have any that were like on the lemony sort of kick? Like a le oh, you didn't have lemon milk. Yeah, 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 like uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like how uh, like oh, it's like a more mellowed version Mango of like weird it, lemon. Yeah, it, uh, it kind of reminds me of like a really mild version of some of the super silver haze stuff. That kind of lemony hazy thing, um, you know that that's cool too. Have you, did you see a bunch of those on your uh, increase yeah, booth? Bro. And some yeah. kind of like incense stuff too. Like we've got a couple of uh -huh. cuts here, like the Harlem Dreams. And then my buddy's got this Aussie Outback too. And it's in that like incense-y sort of frankincense realm. I had a couple yeah. that like that. One of my males that I used. So I did, uh, I increased three packs using two males. And then I utilized one male just to seed up all of my keepers. Um, and that male was on the incense-y realm. And it had this like, I called it like a Crocs back pattern. The leaf was like contour, ah, uh, contour is the wrong word, but it wasn't like variegated. It was weird. It was like a textured leaf, very ruffled. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. I yeah. know exactly what and, you're talking about. Uh, awesome, man. Yeah. Cause I had three females that were like that too. Um, but yeah, I had a few. I only had one. one. Okay. Cause my friend had this um, Kalina Negra from White Buffalo Seeds, and that's Seeds Man Hay, uh, Colombian Black by Seeds Man Hayes. And so there were a few of the mango haze that smelled exactly like that. It was like that lemon um, sort of kick that I guess is like an O haze thing. Not sure. But yeah, I was stoked on it because I didn't get a lot of mango, but a fair bit of this um, lemony and like incense sort of stuff. But I don't get to grow them properly. Like they were just for seed. I um, had planned to fill the greenhouse with them, but my greenhouses were too chockers to get them in because they took ages to flip, man. Like I put them in 72 hours darkness. And then, um, which Sam Sunk Man had said was like what you do for sativas to show sex or whatever. And I chucked him outside and it still took like a good five weeks for them to sex. Hey, like the longest stuff I've ever um, had to show sex. Yeah. Um, the ones I did outside here triggered super late. Um, but indoor, they don't really, really hesitate. I've noticed they kind of go right to it, which I thought was pretty weird. But I had some that it was, you know, September before they flipped and I had to, I had to move uh, some of the ones I did outside, you know, into a greenhouse to finish. And it, it's not that they took so long to flower. It's just, that they triggered way later than, I mean, they triggered later than a five did here. Yeah. That's crazy. I told my buddy that and he's like, fuck, that's nuts. Cause he'd only grown a few as well. And um, hadn't got to flower them. So, wow. Super sativa. I wonder if that's your like selection, Wally, like when you got the seed line, like, that's something my mate asked me to ask you. What do you know what mango haze IBL is? Like what what is it inbred in a certain direction or for, for earlier stuff, so Shanty reckons. And I, I I didn't I didn't really ask at the time how many like generations he'd inbred it or or what he selected for, but obviously it was for earlier stuff. And um I, I've grown a lot of mango haze before, just the normal one. And most of what I found was that incense sort of smell you were talking about. And uh, it wasn't until I grew this IBL, I actually found a mango mango haze, which uh, was a bit of a surprise. It was fatter bud, though, and um, it smelled like um, more ripening mangoes, which I'm used to sour mangoes in, like, Asian stuff that I've grown. And um, so then I, I could see actually why it was called mango haze. Prior to that, I was more like incense haze to me. I never came across a mango one. For High and Lonesome, what were some of your favorite crosses with the mango haze? Or what, you know, what what did you like coming out of that? Um, it's I've really enjoyed all of them. Uh, it's it's uh it has something I like in a male. It's very I think it's very transparent. Um you get you get the mango haze in there it's definitely there you definitely you get the effect from it um you know you get that incense back into it but it lets the mother show through really well um you know the the kim d and the tk cross to mango haze are both this uh, it, to me it's like it's like zombie weed you know like you're it completely spaces your mind out 
but you're still like motivated. You're up doing things. It's just like mechanical motion. It's uh, uh it's it's really kind of awesome. I've been smoking that every day. Um, but then uh, the the green crack mango haze. It really lets. I mean, it's like it's very mangoey. Um, it kind of it goes in different directions as it cures, kind of. Um, but that for flavor, that one's incredible. Um, the um, break and haze, which is the electric boogaloo, dog shit, whatever, uh, mango haze. That's I, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, I actually have a bunch going right now. Um, I've kind of been wanting to do a, a EB project for a few years. I've made, I think this was the sixth outcross I made with it. And I think it's the one to look for a male to back cross to, um, the plants are, they're what I wanted. Um, you, you do get variations on the mother there. Um, there are a few straight mango haze plants, but for the most part, it, it really lets the mother plant shine through. Super cool to hear that. They sound delicious, those crosses, actually. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you get some of them? No, just the, um, oh, I don't think so. Just the East Coast Sour Diesel Appalachia one that I that I recall. All right, I'll, I'll make yeah. sure you get them. What cool. did you get? The A5 Mango Haze, mate, and some LA Kush Mango Haze or something like that? I might have. I'd have to chalk. That, that, those seed containers I've got parked there, 4 way and uh, I have trouble finding stuff now. So I've got stuff <laughs> thrown it all, so I, you know, I can sort it all out. But uh, there's so much stuff in there, eh? I've literally well, lost would... yeah, I can't even find what I – and I'm sure it's in there, but, now nah, I can't find it. <laughs> Wally, did you have anything else to add to the uh, Mango Haze account? Uh, any Anything um, come to mind while Hein Lonesome was talking about it? Well, so, some of my first experiences with it, to be honest, I um, it was um, mold resistance better than anything I had ever seen. I saw that stuff go in, in later flower – and it was just pouring here for weeks, like literally every day, all day. And that stuff, um, you know, you fold back the buds to, to check the calaxes for any damage. And and no, I didn't get any. And it finished. And it was uh, super strong and um, really euphoric. And uh, the tolerance, to build a tolerance to, took a long time. I smoked that stuff for like maybe a month even, and I was still getting smashed uh, all the time. So, um, yeah, here, the mold, the, the mold resistance here was incredible as well. Um, mm. We re really struggle with that, especially as you take plants in the November. Um, you know, I, I, I moved all of mine, you know, that late into a greenhouse. Um, and they were they were rock solid even you know the heat went out at one point and um you know it was a pretty fucking piss poor run um but the mango haze not a speck of mold on them yeah they're champions eh? yeah incredible plants want to sit at the table with the syndicate check out our patreon in our link tree or description below our merch site is officially live we have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.